Hi, everybody. I will deliver uh, a short uh, presentation about uh, UI in eSport games. And uh, the ways in, and how we can integrate some features into our own uh, UI, UX uh, experiences in uh, enterprise uh, software. Here's a short video uh, to get us into the mood. It's like nothing you'll ever experience. Anything can happen at any moment. Oh my God. People watch other people play video games. That's extraordinary. Experience the global phenomenon. Wow. It's insane how we've gone from little rooms to giant arenas. All the players. We can play from 12 to 15 hours a day. Was it like that when we moved in? All the drama. South Korea has been dominating. We started getting the fans and the groupies. North America has struggled. If America wins everything, it's going to flip the world on its head. And all the action. Welcome to the Intel X-Ring Master, San Jose! Right now, it's the battle. We all know at any moment, something unforgettable can happen. Still alive, you kidding me? All work, all play. Experience the world premiere, followed by a live eSports event, July 21st Burbank and July 28th Cologne. For tickets on sale, visit eSportsandCinema.com. Statistics. 25% of gamers today, are, only 25% of gamers today are under 18 years old. 49% uh, of gamers are 18, from 18 to 48. 67% of uh, households in the US today play video games. And 40% of uh, all the gamers are women. The average gamer age is 34. That's the gamers' the demographics today. So what is eSports? Uh, the general term refers to competition between a number of players in a video game. This is uh, the earliest eSport competition took place in, on October 19th, 1972 at Stanford University for a game called uh, Space Wars. In the, in the 80s uh, was the first, was the earliest large scale eSport event. Uh, that was the, the Space Invaders Champion, Championship held by Atari. And it was uh, more than 10,000 players participated. Today, thanks to the internet and the popularity of these events grew meteorically. Today, the biggest events are the Intel Extreme Masters, a BattleNet World Championship, and the International. Uh, the International is Dota's biggest show and was held on August in Seattle. The sum prize of that competition was 16 mil 16 and a half million dollars. 8.5 of this uh, prize pool was uh, generated by the community itself. So, uh, the UI in those, uh, uh, in those games, the main difference in game in UI, game in UI, the UI in games from other UI design is the interaction with a fictional avatar, the user, be uh, the user becomes invisible. Uh, main uh, genres of uh, esports uh, today are uh, RTS, uh, a typical game of RTS uh, feature resource gathering, base building, and in-game technological development, and indirect control of units. The task, uh, the task a player to perform and succeed in an RTS can be very demanding, and complex UI user interfaces have evolved to cope with that, with that challenge. Pack of 2 is the, the main uh, uh, game that uh, the that, uh, player participate uh, in uh, eSports. Uh, this is the, the start page. It has a typical UI of a communica communication hub, which enables the, the players to interact and notify them about special events and news. Uh, the matchmaking screen 
is where you find your online competition. During, during the game, you are fed in information in various hubs. There's a typical counter that helps you uh, manage your resource. Uh, the minimap, but, and by deploying uh, scouts, you can map control with, uh, with a glimpse to the side of the screen, see the enemy movements, and plan your future attacks. Uh, by clicking on various game elements, such, such as buildings and units, you get a, a data specific to that element in the, in the form of status and action commands. The game environment itself is used by the player to gain more information, such as the status of his economy by the size of the crystals in the mines. During engagements, all these elements are being used by the player simultaneously, and the quicker thinker prevails. At the end of each match, you get an extensive statistical look on the match, showing the player how well he did compared to his rival. By studying the play-by-play -play elements, you can better yourself in the next match. And uh, this is what you fight for. Players get a recognition for their effort with a badge that shows their skill level to the world. Blizzard has elevated their badge system to an art. Since uh, they started with the various league badges and then adding badges in, uh, inside the leagues once they re realized that less avid gamers got frustrate, frustrated when they didn't get acknowledged for their effort, if they didn't progress to a higher league. So they added uh, a, a various, uh, another layer to the badge system. The first-person shooters are a type of three-dimensional shooter game featuring a first-person point of view, which the player sees the action through the eyes of the, uh, his avatar. The primary, the primary design element is combat, and in esports shooters, strategy and team play are the core fundamentals. Diegetic, the main uh, way that uh, UI is implemented in first-person person shooters, uh, the player and the avatar can interact with the UI through visual and audio and audible, providing a more immersive and integrated experience. You see the number of bullets that uh, you have on the guns uh, directly on your, the weapons itself, and you don't have uh, different UIs to show you how much uh, time you have or how much uh, ammunition. Another way to implement the UI uh, is the meta, uh, which is uh, Added, which adds information for the user on top of the uh, level of the display that is not part of the game space. Uh, in modern, uh, modern uh, first-person person shooters, you don't have the gauge uh, of how much life uh, you currently have. You just get a blood splatter all over the screen, which uh, lets you know that you got hit and you're about to lose the game. Uh, another way that, that is implemented is with the various marks on the screen that c helps you uh, navigate uh, and also fly. Uh, by using special UI elements within the game environment, we avoid having to break the experience by jumping to a menu. In this example, you can uh, see that uh, you can see the various checkpoints that the player has to reach, uh, which is uh, the C, the A, and the B. And uh, you could do that without uh, going to a different screen. It is on the uh, top layer of the game itself.
this is another way to add more information to the screen of the game without uh, leaving. Uh, Non-diegetic information is the uh, the more traditional UI that used in a game. Uh, elements are still inherit the visual style associated with the game world, but are not restricted to the different environment and are given solutions when the other methods won't work. That includes, of course, uh, when you need a top view of the game, you still know you're in the, the same game, but uh, you get a different uh, style uh, of the UI. In the, in the start of each match, you get a complex selection page where you choose your role in your squad and the various gear to help you carry your objectives. The last game genre that has dominated esports uh, today is the MOBA. Uh, MOBA games are two five-player teams Two five-player teams that combat in a set arena. The objective is to destroy the opposing team's main structure with the assistance of periodically spawned computer-controlled units that march forward along with a set path. You start with the, uh, the main screen of the, uh, the hub. The game genre resemble, resemble in many aspects the uh, traditional team sports games such as basketball and football. Like in these games, players choose different characters that will help them, that will help their team defend or attack in the, with their various cap uh, uh, capabilities of the character. Uh, statistics are the key factor in these games. Here is one screen when you can compare your own abilities to those of a potential teammate or competitor. Uh, this is the core UI of the game. Uh, the minimap is for strategical information. The main hub for the, uh, is for the player's status, gear, and abilities. It's both used with the mouse and keyboard shortcuts to enhance your reaction speed. At the top is the global stats, the kill score, team status, and daylight cycle. The last part of the game is the, the last part in the game UI is the store, which helps the players tweak and upgrade their player characters to gain an advantage over their opponents. Let me break up this scene. This is a, a typical uh, uh, engagement when both teams uh, start a fight. In this case, the, initial, the initiation of the fight was made by Shadow Fint, blinking, blinking in using, using BKB and releasing his ulti, followed by his teammates, Naga Siren, Shadow Shaman, Tide Hunter, and Darkseid. Mm. And by uh, combining their abilities, they totally annihilated the, the other team. And this is a GG. After the match is over and the dust has settled, you get a statistical view of how everyone did in the match. So what all, what all of this has to do with us? First, it's a wonderful compet competitive world, which I encourage you to try, if you never did. Look around. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to do amazing things. But what if we could go further? What if we could go beyond the screen? Where your digital world is blended with your real world. Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? 
I just put the images in OneDrive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. Look at this formation. Let's take a closer look. And new ways to create the things we imagine. Because when you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. This is Microsoft HoloLens. With the Internet of Things, we will have different UIs on different surfaces, wearables on walls, or on even on ourselves. We will use it in our cars and uh, everywhere. So the UI will go with us and not just on our computers. By using uh, competitive and gamification elements, we can add a more immersive nature to the more everyday task and training. The future is bright and full of gaming. Thank you very much, Echil, uh, for the fascinating talk uh, on uh, UI and games and how it can apply on us. I just want to maybe to have an open discussion and see. Uh, wait a minute, I see someone wrote a message. Let's just see what it is. Oded, earlier you mentioned that a game had to add badge levels because users were disappointed. They did not get recognition for their efforts. Did that change also reduce the perceived value of the badges? That's a, that's first of all, it's a question for Yechiel. Yes, Yechiel. Well, uh, it. Uh, as, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, speak, speak. Uh, the, the first layer of the badges, which is the leagues uh, in the game, were the more important one, uh, and the more serious gamers uh, still ha uh, knew that th those were the, the more important badges, but the, the, the once they added the the other layer, the players which we didn't that didn't have uh, enough time to uh, to uh, be uh, to train more in the game, still could see that they could uh, uh, still progress inside the the game. So uh, veteran players. Uh, could uh, still strive for better leagues, and uh, more casual players could uh, enjoy their uh, periodically uh, an advancement inside the, the leagues. Okay, uh, I, I just like, would like to emphasize, first of all, I think that it's a fascinating talk you hear, uh, from uh, several perspectives. First of all, I think that uh, it encompasses uh, the world of gaming, and it's an interesting world by itself, but I think that more importantly, uh, I think that we uh, in the enterprise UI uh, can learn a lot of uh, a lot of elements uh, from uh, these games. It's not only the the, the future that Yechiel portray that how the future will be with devices or with overlay UIs. Uh, we look around us, even in our existing applications, you can see some implementations that have been done uh, of badges. I think that. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not mistaken, but Timo Schneller from the OMI team uh, introduced uh, a badge system in uh, one of the in, as a concept, uh, and uh, also gave a talk on gamification uh, a few months ago. Uh, but gamifications and and badges are something that are becoming mainstream inside enterprise UI. Uh, but more 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 than that, I think that a lot about the UI itself that we see in games about uh, the levels and how the UI is laid out on the screen and, and, and combined together is something that we can learn from and implement in uh, enterprise UI as, 
as as much as as it sounds far fetched, it can be reality. So uh, I appreciate the talk that Yechiel uh, took the time to share with us because he's a uh, uh, very uh, talented and very uh, uh, passionate uh, e-game player. Uh, but I think that from the UI itself, you know, even if you look at the uh, simple games like Angry Birds, uh, about the the cool interactions and animations and the cool approaches to interaction that they have in games, are things that we can easily transform into uh, our UIs and have it there. Even how settings sometimes open in games, uh, even in simple games, like I mentioned, Angry Birds, for example, the 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 cool the coolness of how they open because it's a game doesn't mean we can't adopt these paradigms into enterprise software. Uh, so uh, now, uh, is there anyone, first of all, we have here people in the audience in Yehud. Is, does anyone have any question here? No. Uh, does someone in the audience have any questions, uh, someone from the participants uh, on the call? Before we move to our next topic? 